Welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video. Um, it's something I've been trying to make for well over a month. Um, but I'm really nervous about it, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, the video today, as you probably know by the title already, is the history of the Magna, the Honda Magna. Um, anyone who watches the channel knows I have a little bit of an obsession or a love with the Super Magna. I own one, um, which does help. But let's get right into it. So, the Honda Magna for me is a special bike. It kind of kicked off the whole muscle bike thing there's still a good few of them around namely the you know the triumph rocket 3 and also the yamaha v max unfortunately the magna is no more um but it did kind of initiate that this the whole muscle bike or muscle cruiser power cruiser type thing there's still even modern bikes a lot of big v twins etc will not outperform even the 750 cc uh, magna let alone the v65 1100 cc magna so before we start off, that's all I really wanted to say was that, you know, the Magna is gone, but it's definitely not forgotten. There's a huge community around the Magna, and there's definitely still a lot of love for the bike. So where did the Magna story start? It started in 1982, when the first Honda Magna was introduced. This V4 platform was based on a race bike that Honda were using at the time, and it had a six-speed transmission, which was actually a 5-speed with an overdrive. It depends on where you ask or how you really like to describe it. So an interesting point with the 1982 was not only that it was a, f a V4, uh, and pretty powerful for its age, well, its time, it also had a hydraulic clutch. Now, I don't know if you've ever used a cable on a hydraulic clutch, but even now, hydraulic clutches, they still feel premium. And at the time, it was a bit of a, I suppose, a departure from the regular clutch that people were using at the time, which was always a cable-driven clutch. You know, hydro hydraulic clutches have their downfalls as well, and I won't go into that in this video, but it was just one thing that to note about that bike was that it did have a hydraulic clutch. In 1983, something really cool happened. 1982 saw the V45, so the 750 Magna. 1983 saw the introduction of the V65 Magna, which was an 1100cc V4 monster. It held, you know, fastest production bike records for years. It did hold that record up until something else happened, which we'll go into in a second. But the V65 at the time, it could run a quarter mile in about 10.8 seconds, which was phenomenal. That was incredibly fast for 1983. And also it looked good doing it and sounded amazing because it's a V4. Other things that happened in 1983 was the V45 got a 4 brake horsepower increase uh, and also a price rise. So whether that's a good thing or not, who knows. In 1983, we also saw the introduction of the... The VF500C uh, Magna, which was a, the V30. So that was a 500cc bike. I'm not really sure why that was ever introduced. It didn't do really well and was eventually killed off along with the V65. But again, I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. Other bikes that do kind of bear the, the Magna name, there is a V-Twin in there as well, a V-Twin 250. But for this, I'm going to leave it out because it's not a V4 and this one is about the V4. So anyway, after 1983 and the introduction of the V65, the fastest production bike and fastest accelerating bike in the world at the time, 1984 saw the 750 decrease to 698cc. This was largely due, due to import tariffs in the US. So, by the way, that was US only. It did not decrease in any other country. It stayed at 750cc, only reduced in America due to the import tariffs. The V65, interestingly, was excluded from this displacement reduction uh, as it was actually built in Ohio so it skirted those issues by being manufactured in the US. 1985 rolled around not a whole pile changed the V45 lost its auxiliary fuel tank to accommodate a lower seat height and also give it a different kind of look so you could also say because cosmetic changes came in it also got a re bigger rear drum so that's the other thing. The V65 itself got some cosmetic changes um, and rumours of a, a, com a competitor's bike started to come in, so another muscle bike was going to muscle onto the scene. <laughs> that bike was the Yamaha VMAX. So 1986 rolls around. The V65 and the V30 were sadly killed off. Um, that was due to a couple of things that I'm going to get into now. So first and foremost, you heard me mention the VMAX, so the VMAX did kind of take over the running of a lot of things. It's still a legend and became a legend in 86 when it was born a 1200cc v4 monster uh i suppose you could call it a sit on on top rocket ship another thing that happened with the magnas which did affect their sales 
is they suffered a camshaft lubrication problem, so the top end of the bike, where the oil pump would not pump enough oil to the top of the engine at idle. Honda, knowing that they had a huge name for reliability, they scrambled to fix the issue, and they did fix it. Unfortunately, the damage was done and sales were impacted, so that was also a large part of the redesign. So at the time, there was three V4s kind of around. Uh, you had the Saber, the Magna, and the Interceptor. The Interceptor was killed and became the CBR. The Saber has been lost to the sands of time. Um, and the Magna got underwent a redesign for the V45 after the death of the V65 and the V30. So the bike closest to my heart was born in 1987, the Honda Super Magna. Not actually christened the Super Magna, it's still a Magna from Honda's perspective, but from anyone who knows and loves these bikes, it did become known, and it is kind of colloquially called the Super Magna now. So, Mr. Iwakura of Honda, the gent, the legend, he designed the piece of magnificence that is the Super Magna, um, and it became the second gen Magna, so the second gen V45. He introduced this bike with upswept exhausts, you know, louvered side panels, large rake, big front wheel. There was just so many things he did differently um, for the time that it possibly was a little bit too out there, maybe a bit ahead of its time in my opinion, but it only lived for two years, 1987 and 1988, unfortunately. So what changed altogether? The louvered side panels already mentioned, uh, upswept exhausts, it also got a solid disc rear wheel, which I'm sure you've seen in some of my pictures. Uh, it got larger intake valves, 27 millimeters, as far as I remember. Um, the dual tail lights that I've spoken about so much, that was also part of the redesign. And with the valves, and it also got new cams, and that gave a kind of better mid-range power than um, its predecessor, which all kind of, um, you know, added to its appeal um, and the 19 inch front wheel which I think looks fantastic so all of these things in 87 did contribute to it becoming the super magnet so 1988 rolled around and the 750 returned to America import tariffs were lifted and the Magna the V45 became what it should have been for those five odd years again the V45 750 or VF 750C uh, super magnet so the side logos on the tank were also changed for the 1988 and the bottom skirt or I don't know what you want to call it, the kind of chin fairing that was a uh, colour match to the rest of the body. The 1987 Magnum was available in red or blue and the 1988 was available in red or black, the blue was dropped. Um, the tank decals also changed between 87 and 88 but nothing major really happened other than that uh, and the chin fairing was colour matched to the body in the 88s, it wasn't in the 87. After 1988, the Magna name died. So, it went into hibernation for five years until 1993, when the third generation Honda Magna uh, was introduced. You probably know this bike from many people having one. They're they're more common, obviously, than the Super Magna because they were built for 10 years between 1993 and 2003. The reason the bike was reintroduced is Honda saw that used sales for their bikes were really strong and obviously they wanted a piece of this pie so they decided to reintroduce the bike um still a v4 much different styling uh it was actually made to look much more like a v-twin than the pre pre predecessors um obviously the predecessors were based very much around that v4 and made to look as if they had a v4 whereas the 1993 version definitely took design cues from from v-twins at the time and had much more kind of a standard exhaust etc i suppose to try fit in with the crowd personally i think it was the wrong direction to go i would have tried to stand out more from the crowd with the v4 but hey i'm not honda so in 1993 uh, a modified vfr 750 engine um was put into this cruiser frame so differences between this and the previous generations the previous generations all had uh shaft drive six gears and obviously looked quite different the 1993 uh, was chain driven and had five gears so that was just one huge change from the off and remember i said earlier about the hydraulic clutch the 1993 came in with a cable clutch 
So why did this happen? Pretty simple, cost saving. So Honda had these parts readily available um, and obviously change and all that stuff is easier to fit in. Shaft drive is expensive but maintenance free, not for this video though. But anyway, so the 1993 did sell pretty well. Really did take a lot of design cues from, from V-Twins, like I said, and largely remained the same. Had a V4 engine, single disc on the front for braking, single drum at the back. Um, you know, straightforward enough, not a huge amount of changes other than your final drive, which obviously changed to chain-driven uh, and a cable-operated clutch. In 2004, to the end of 2003, early 2004, the Magna name finally came to a full and complete end. We haven't seen a rebirth since, and it's been quite a long time. I'm talking 15 years plus. So what finally killed off the Magna? Pretty simple. The Magna died for multiple reasons. A fairly competitive market, not great sales towards the ends of its life, and a huge preference towards big, grumbly V-twins. The Magna was not, wasn't was directly replaced by, but basically was. Basically was replaced by the Honda VTX 1800. So in 2003, a new model of the VTX was introduced to coincide with the death of the Magna. This was just market trends, uh, unfortunately. That's, that's pretty much what did away with the Magna. Everyone wanted a V-twin. The interesting thing is, even the Gen 1 Magnas will outperform an 1800cc VTX because they're better, in my opinion. But hey, who am I to say? I'm not Honda, like I said. But Honda were wrong. You were wrong, Honda. The VTX didn't live long either, by the way. That died off in 2008. Other bikes which went out with the, the Honda Magda, sadly, were the Honda Valkyrie, which was such a cool bike. The six-cylinder from the Goldwing, just in a cruiser frame. I would love one of those bikes. They're so, so, so cool. And also, as far as I remember, the Shadow Two models of the Shadow died. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head which ones they were, but I know they did go at the same time. The other things which obviously saw the demise of the V65, again, I think a mistake. The larger displacement definitely would have stayed doing better were the Honda VMAX and obviously that reliability issue that did hit Honda in uh, 86 and back for the Gen 1 Magna. It, it did hurt sales. It did hurt the reputation. It did hit, it hurt the desire for people to buy the bike, unfortunately, but sure. That's the way these things go. Hats off to the VMAX. The VMAX is still around. Um, I'd love a VMAX. I have nothing against them other than the fact that they led to the demise of the V65, or at least assisted in it, which does upset me. But hey, you know, you got to live with these things. Lastly, what's the future of the Magna? I don't know. Will it ever come back? Who knows? Honda still have the capability to make a Magna, obviously. Market trends, though, will people ever want one again? I don't know. Uh, I personally would love to see something like the Super Magna come back in more modern form, but not completely ruined by modern technology. It doesn't. It doesn't need it. Would I polish up the Super Magna and add, you know, newer bits? I don't think so. I like how raw the bike feels, and I I love the performance of a V four. I think the V four is a great engine. Not as torquey as a V-twin, obviously. Not as out-and-out -out grunty as a bigger displacement V-twin. Um, but faster. Uh, like I said, the Super Magna... My Super Magna from 87 would easily outperform an 1800cc VTX in a straight line. It just it just would. Um, hands down. That's without any modifications whatsoever. So, what would I like to see? I'd like to see Honda revisit the Magna. Um, people still trade them all the time. It's a sad fact that the, the Super Magna has made a fairly quick demise from people parting them out. People buy them to part them out. Uh, obviously, look, you know, modding, very difficult on the bike now. The Gen 1s are still around as well, and the Gen 3s are very popular. Uh, an absolutely very well-known bike, obviously, is, you know, do it with Dan owns one and made it made it very popular, so... I would imagine a lot of people bought the Gen 3 to kind of emulate uh, what Dan has done with his bike. And by the way, I love his bike. I think he did a fantastic job with it. Would I hardtail one? No, but that's kind of road dependent. We don't have the roads that they have in the States to, to hardtail bikes. It just it wouldn't work here. So unfortunately, that is it. Now, I'm going to take this uh, opportunity to kind of nominate a few people. Make a history of video on what your favorite bike is. You don't have to own it. Um... 
just have to like it. That's it. So the people I'd like to nominate are Monkey Butt, Lucky Luke Rides, Kazawaki, Hippo Drones, who else? West End Boy, What Would Grant Do? Also, The Chronicles of Flinch, uh, Grom Trooper, and Paddy Outback. If you want to nominate yourself, nominate yourself down in the comments. That's that's it. And um, hmm, for today's end of video challenge, what would you name this fella? And it can't be Michael. That would be rude. He has to have a different name to me. <laughs> but yeah, if you've watched, thanks for watching. If you stuck it out this long, thank you very much. Um, do let me know what you think of this video because I have been super nervous to make it. I didn't know how an old talking head would go. I might even revisit this video in the future if I think I can do a better job on it because I probably butchered it a bit and I would imagine omitted some several sections. If you watch, thanks for watching. If you've liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. If you're new to the channel, there's like 58 other videos in my list. Go have a look at them. Tell me what you think. If you like them, why not subscribe and stick around? Uh, so until next time, thank you very much for watching. Adios.